Yo guys and welcome back to another Spore creation video and the latest weekly request, the Silverian Dreamer from World of Warcraft. As always, if you guys enjoy my videos and you want to see more of these Spore creations, please don't forget to just say hello down in the comment section below. Or if you want to have any more suggestions and ideas for future creations or future weekly requests, as always, the active engagement really helps, so thank you in advance. Now then, for the creation itself then. So, the Sibelian Dreamer was a very interesting design because it looks very majestic. In game, it's kind of so and so, but a lot of the artwork I've seen when trying to find references looked really great, and so I tried to capture that same majestic pose. Normally, me having been a very avid World of Warcraft player, I tend to find that a lot of the dragon models are kind of samey. They have the same skeleton, the same rig, and therefore it's kind of an unintentional thing where when I translate that into Spore, sometimes I unintentionally make it a little bit too generic. So in the case of the Silverian Dreamer, I've really tried to capture that more majestic form. One key such example is the posture, which is a little bit more, a little bit more streamlined, a little bit taller, the tail is a lot longer. Once again, with the most dragons have like a very samey appearance, they tend to be very hunched over and kind of like in a posture of a Komodo dragon. Whereas here, as you can see, the neck is upright as I tend to feel like that having the animal hold their head up and high tends to make them feel just a bit more grandiose, just a little bit more elegant and such which will also be emphasised a lot later on via all the feathers and, you know, those are the little features down here and there. When it came to the limbs, the limbs was a bit of a fun one because when I make my dragons, or well, any creature to be honest, I tend to make the limbs rather muscular, but quite thin in general, whereas the Silverian Dreamer has got a bit of an interesting feature with its back legs, which kind of look like, I'd say, kind of like bird claws, where the... I'm not actually sure, like, I, I get the vibe that the Silverian Dreamer is actually feathered. I mean, the wings clearly are, but I'm talking about the, the rest of the body. And it kind of looks like that the feathers end at around the knee or shin or, you know, just generally that area. So it had that going on in the back legs, which meant I had to be a little bit more thoughtful in terms of the general width, angle, such. But the front legs in particular, the forearms, they were a lot chunkier. So, like I said, when I'm used to doing these more thinner musculature limbs, I really had to try and have it be accurate, but also have it look good, since the contrast is, well, very contrasting, and I wanted to make it look quite natural. The head, I have to say, I really had a lot of fun with. I'm very, very happy with that the head turned out. So I know a lot of you guys really want me to make more creatures with actual functional heads, since I personally don't mind having, you know, just static floating things that resemble the face. I'm trying to have more functional heads, this being one of them. With the Silverian Dreamer in the game, it's got a very pointed, narrow snout. Imagine how in a lot of mythologies or a lot of movies and such, elves have like very angular and sharp facial expressions compared to humans. The same for the Silverian Dreamer, it's got like a very sharp and angular face in compared to other dragons, especially World of Warcraft. So for that reason, I went with the beak. The beak is, of course, a little bit, you know, unusual, but it did get that point. It got the very small lower jaw, and by using the nail downs, or the recoloring nail downs, I was able to have the general shape of the beak be very streamlined, very smooth, in combination with the rather pronounced eyes, and of course, the frills in the back. Like I said, I'm just really happy with how it came out. And I think it's a really nice balance and offset compared to the very long tail, as we can see here. Because right now it feels quite nicely balanced. The tail is very big, very, very long. But that is another thing World of Warcraft is a lot of their creatures tend to be quite exaggerated. This being one such case. But I think it kind of works out in the end, especially when you see the long tail in conjunction with the very large wings. So in this stage here, I'm just adding all the various blue feathering or mane or like, like I said earlier, I'm not actually sure what is covering the creature in the first place. I, I think it's like a combination of feathers and fur. I'm not sure, but either way, it's got a very, very nice long majestic mane going from the back of his head all the way to the tip of his tail into a more larger poof at the end. And that's what I've captured here. Which has also been quite nice and convenient because the upper half of the Tavarian Dreamer, I'd say more like the upper third, is covered in a nice clean blue colour. Which is a bit of a tricky thing to do in Spore because while it's very very easy to have the top of your creature textured in a certain way, it's hard for that specific texture to include 
often the head, but usually always the tail. For whatever reason, well, as big as I use limb tails, it never really quite textures the way I want it to. So by using this main piece here and just having it consistently go throughout the entire thing, I was able to get that very nice, very clean and consistent upper blue area. And next up, of course, is the wings. The wings are always a bit of a fun one in the sense that they're always quite a challenge because wings are the kind of thing where they're just very hard to posture and spore. It's very hard to have the wings folded, formed, and so in such a way where everything kind of stacks properly, everything's nice and smooth, nice and consistent. It still looks dramatic, it looks interesting, but it doesn't look over the top. It also doesn't look awkward, and not to mention overlapping parts. Oof. Overlapping parts can be a right big struggle due to the fact that in Spore and the way it renders things they quite often get some really ugly black or grey texture glitches. I think I actually didn't get them this time for a change which is a huge huge relief because they do tend to really make or break a creation. In this case I think I was saved from it. But as you can see, when it came to the wings, it was all made with individual feathers of uh, varying shades. Actually, no, I think in this stage there's one consistent blue shade. Whereas, I'm trying to remember. Yes, that's right. The large feathers you can see currently now are actually going to be the same color as the rest of the mane. That way it remains consistent. Uh, for those two parts, I used either a detail or a coat variant, meaning that whatever colour the detail or coat and the colour palettes is when textured a creature, those two types of parts will inherit that colour, which is a very nice, easy way of getting like a very consistent colour scheme in where you want it to be. So like I said, the feathers are going to be the same shade of blue as the rest of the mane, whereas the nail downs here, the big orange blocks, those are going to be very different colours as well as increasing the overall weight and plumage of the actual wings themselves. And one thing in particular is because of the way the feathers are and the way they have a very, very thin base and all those really nasty gaps, I've had to add a little bit more nail down as I normally like to around the base of the wing or around the frame. Not necessarily what I enjoy doing because, it, again, it does tend to cause that glitch I mentioned earlier with the big black and grey shadows. But again, no, I think this time round was just about good enough. It made it feel a bit heavier, which therefore made it feel like a bit thicker, a bit fuller, and again, more feathery. And especially, as you can probably see now, I've added the same main parts around the base of the wings too. That way, now the entirety of the wings are going to be blue and just look overall very, very nice. Now, there were stripes in the pattern of the wings, which I'm currently adding here. And, like, it was a bit of a darker shade of blue, and it wasn't terrible. I did try to incorporate that into the creation, but unfortunately, Spore being the way it is, when I added the little blue stripes, it just looked really, really awkward. Like I said earlier, feathers are, or are wings, are a lot of fun in the fact that they can be very, very tedious and very tricky. And it's very, very hard to make them not look awkward. And adding those pattern stripes in there made it look very, very awkward. So unfortunately, I had to give them a pass in the end. But that's fine, though, because I really think that the rest of the wings kind of sell themselves anyway. And next up, I'm just adding all the little final details. A couple of the little minor details that the dragon has include some little tentacle or... No, not, ante not tentacle. Um, little antenna things on the top of its head which are about the same shade as the rest of the creature. And it has a bit of a large uh, chest plate because it is meant to be a mount in World of Warcraft, so it needs a saddle. And the saddles on some of the latest mounts have been quite extravagant, usually sporting like a lot of armor. In the case of this Avarian Dreamer, a very, very large breastplate or chest plate that covers the entirety of its front. And of course, around the back for the saddle. So in this case, I tried to incorporate that in and I think it went okay. Considering how complexity is always a bit of a thing, I couldn't really go that hard in the detail. I do think it came out quite nicely in the end. As for the creation itself, I am very, very happy with. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I really was trying to go for a more graceful, a more majestic, you know, that kind of theme of a creature, which I do find that for myself is very hit or miss. Sometimes I just completely miss the bar and I pretty much fail to make a graceful creature. I think this one kind of nailed it. Animation wise, eh, I mean, Spore's never been known for its animation. Well, not in the right way anyway. But for the overall appearance, I am very, very happy and I'm very, very pleased as to how this went. Overall, I tried to take my time more, really focus on the little day details, on the positioning, placement, and I think it looks a little bit more polished than some of my more recent dragons. So guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you learned something or two. Like I mentioned earlier, if you enjoy, if you have any criticism or any suggestions for future videos, 
please do comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. The active engagement truly helps and it allows me to produce more videos. As always guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.